Okay, we're doing a flush and anorod change on this water heater. This is a 2016 ream. It's just draining very slowly for some reason. It's got decent flow, but uh, for some reason it's taken forever. And then I have this uh, sort of contraption right here. This screws into the water heater and then you attach a drill right here at the end. Well, you can hear it's it's giving up its final amount of water. And then you hook up a hose, and you uh, here I'll just give you a better idea. Of what it you put a drill on it. To, uh, supposed to crush up the sediment with the water and then you can see it all coming out so I just wanted to get some video of this to see if it works at all and you'll be checking that out with me today Basically, you take this out. And put it in. Spill water everywhere. much going on nothing's really coming out so you would see this whole thing turn white and it crushes the there's actually like a crushing what you call couple of um, pieces of metal that spin by each other and then crush all the sediment up and then the spring inside sort of stirs up the sediment used this once before and it didn't work really well. Now we're using it again. So you're supposed to cycle the water on and then off and then on and then off. Try and stir up the sediment.
coming out. Not a lot of sediment coming out. I feel like this thing just wears a hole in the tank, you know. I've never had it work well once for me. I've only used it a couple of times. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell you the name of it because I'm blind, but... One day it'll work great. I just don't know what day that is. Right now I'm just trying to get the rest of the water out. Killing time until the odor gets here with the anode rod. So we'll give it another little flush. So I feel like he should have called me out here to take care of this mess, right? I mean, look at this. There's like a hose boom. That's been teed off the cold line after the shutoff. Oops. Hose boom teed into the cold line after the shutoff. There's all kinds of uh, leaking somewhere. I got my favorite copper supply lines. You should probably do shark bite, fresh shut off, all the way to here, and then do a T back in here maybe prior to the shark bite, and then uh, be done with all this and go stainless steel supply lines. <laughs> but I gotta do the anode rod, and of course it's one of these types here, and um, I have to get my heat gun on it and soften it up so I can get my socket in there, and then just pray to God I don't strip it. In the meantime, I'll have to get this ducting out of my way because it's right in the, in fact, all this piping is right in the way of my uh, impact driver. Which is right here. So I don't do a lot of anode rods and flushes and stuff for people. They just, you know, most people just buy used water heaters from me and want them installed. And then I do the service calls for like a not functioning water heater. But I do occasionally get requests to do work like this. So, this is one of those requests. We're 
done here. Do you think I just broke the glass lining on the uh, water heater? Look at that in. All right, it's in. I got this. Uh, I got this socket marked, so I, I know when it's flush. Because I don't know how much money you're trying to save, you know. Yeah, it's just it's just too dangerous, right? Like some yeah, people don't care, you know, they'll they'll hire know. anybody. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Brett's got a license, but you're gonna pay more for all that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's why I don't have my guys do it. To be honest. Oh, you're worried about them falling? Yeah. All it takes is one, man. Right?
Okay, it's flushed. The anode rod is changed. All I need to do is put the uh, ducting back on and fire it up. And we'll be good to go. Thank you for watching. And have a great day.